Uh, today we're going to run uh, a demo for you on this Browning Sharp number 2. Uh, it's a universal cylindrical grinder. It uh, has a bolt down ID attachment. It has a work head that can swivel as well as a wheel slide that swivels at three different points. Uh, you have a bottom swivel here which swivels the entire infeed mechanism so you can truly grind at 30 degrees. Uh, there's an eccentric swivel in the center here that allows uh, extra travel uh, if you wanted to grind a big piece or a small piece you could you could you could adjust the way this is and then also you have a third swivel at the top there to set uh, various angles you have your tailstock mounted here generally you would take the tailstock off if you were going to fold this down so that you could reciprocate your table you have a longitudinal hand wheel as well as the infeed hand wheel. Now we're going to go ahead now and start this. This is your start button. I'm going to use the external wheel. I want to have this switch on external. So that will start the hydraulics as well as the spindle. Uh, the next thing would be start the work head, the table moving. The speed can be adjusted. This valve here, this control here to go faster or to go slower. When we want to start our actual infeed, we start the infeed. And you'll see that at each table reversal, the hand wheel moves in by the amount set on the selector dial over here. grinding mode where we start our infeed table no longer moves but the continue the infeed is continuous that's plunge grinding or continuous infeed grinding now this will continue to feed around until there's a stop pin back here you might see in the video going to come around here and this is adjustable you can put this into several different places to set your stock removal and final size I'll come up against that dead stop there and that's a fixed stop that would be your zero at this point you would disengage this clutch and you can come off the piece this does not have a rapid so you normally would back your wheel up two or three turns Unload your workpiece, put the new workpiece in, one, two, three in, and then you start your feed again. The uh, headstock has a variable speed. You can slow that up or speed it up or slow it down. Let me shut it off for a second. has a fixed uh, spindle right now, what you would call a live spindle, so it could rotate a chuck, the entire thing is turning, but it also can be disengaged at this little pivot point here, and then you lock the spindle with the pin in the rear, and you can have uh, a dead center for you know, a, a drive door mounted on the outside for when you're turning between centers. So this is what they call a live and a dead, live and a dead uh, worker. Also, we have a fold down ID attachment. We'll shut the machine off. We'll put this over here on internal. There's a little hinge down on the bottom here. You let down and then you lower your spindle carefully. Belt rides on there like that. And of course, now is the time when you'd want to crank your wheel slide back further uh, so you can get at this. In the center, 
you have also a course adjustment so this goes faster. And you also have an internal grinding adjustment so that you grind at the back of the bore as opposed to coming with the wheel slide moving in. That's a feature only found on a brown and sharp. Uh, so let me put this back and we'll start the machine again. Now we have this spindle going. I don't want to take a chance moving the table because I still have, normally you would take your tailstock off, bring your stops down close together and do some kind of reciprocating type of grind. And this folds back up out of the way. There is a chuck that goes with this machine, it's right here on the back. It mounts on the taper, there's a taper in here and there's a taper at the front nose and these four bolts that hold it in. We took it off uh, to make a measurement for somebody. It's a four jaw independent adjustable chuck, probably about, I'd say, eight to ten inches, eight inches. Got all the guarding on the front here. Original paint, probably. And it's 440 volts. And that's it.